The U.S. Supreme Court stole the show this week, setting the agenda for end-of-the-week news shows. And why should we be any different here at the Roundtable? Joining me to talk about the health care decision and the other big cases that were decided this week, KPBS health reporter Kenny Goldberg and Tony Perry, San Diego Bureau Chief of the Los Angeles Times. Thanks. Thank you both for being here. So, Kenny, by now, people at home know that the Affordable Care Act was upheld by the court. The individual mandate, that part of the law that says everyone has to buy health insurance or face a penalty or tax, that was withheld, upheld by the court. Did this ruling surprise you? I was flabbergasted. I mean, that morning when it was announced, I was just shocked because I and so many other people thought it was going to go totally the other way. So I was, I was just bowled over when it happened. What about you, Tony? I, too, was bowled over, particularly <laughs> since I initially saw CNN and Fox say it was going down, <laughs> and then, boom, it That's went right. the other way. But... Uh, being only an amateur on this, I was pretty bowled over, too. I'll tell you what one of the uh, legal experts told me. He said, you know, it would have been easy for the court to say this was unconstitutional. It actually took will to find it constitutional. Do you think he's right? I, I think th there's a lot of speculation about what uh, this kind of argument that Justice Roberts had to craft out of nothing to make this thing work, to justify it. He, he could be right. I mean, who knows? What do you make of the, uh, of the analysis now that he did this to preserve the reputation of the court so that the court didn't look politically partisan, Bush v. Gore, et cetera? Uh, what, what do you make of that? That's certainly a possibility. I mean, uh, again, we don't know what they're thinking. We don't know what that guy thought. I mean, it could have been uh, maybe he actually really believed what he wrote. I, I don't know. But yet he, he justified the, uh, the act in a way that the President of the United States says it wasn't. Uh, Obama had said, no, 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 it's not a tax. But Roberts he, but he, looks at it and says, it's a tax. And right, but he okay. went along with the argument of the uh, Solicitor General. So, uh, what do you Yeah, the uh, Solicitor General, who we all thought was a uh, numbskull when mm -hmm. he made the argument. Mm -hmm. he, got, he got pilloried news stories. Hey, turns maybe out, he was smarter turns than the out the guy is pretty yeah. smart. Yeah. And, and maybe the uh, administration is smarter than we think, too, and they knew this all along. It's just like, why say it's a tax until you finally have to say it's a tax, yeah. right? So l let's talk about what it means, though. Here in San Diego, we have 600,000 people in the county uninsured. What will this law mean to them? Well, what it will mean is in California, uh, the Medi-Cal program will be expanded statewide to include about 2 million more people now that are uninsured that will get on Medi-Cal. In San Diego County, between the Medi-Cal expansion and other publicly subsidized programs, be about, be about 200,000 people that will come off the uninsured rolls and be insurable under the Affordable Care Act. What won't change is for people, uh, nothing will change really for people who have insurance. And for the undocumented immigrants who don't have any insurance, there's no provision to help them. And, and Tony, California has been a leader, right, in terms of moving forward on the Medicaid expansion. It has, and it did not join in the lawsuits. Remember, a lot of states right. uh, went to court on this, uh, nibbled away at a little bit of it, but didn't overturn it all the way. And of course, now they're, they're they've been put in their place by the U.S. Supreme. So California really has not you know, been against this, been waiting. Governor Brown immediately said, okay, bring it on. We're, we're for uh, changing and expanding. We'll see. Because we stand to gain a lot of money. I mean, along with this mandate comes federal money. That's right. Well, the federal government pays for 100% of the Medi-Cal expansion or the Medicaid expansion in other states. There's a diminishing federal percentage as years go by, but basically the federal government's paying for it. So I'm really wondering when it all comes down to it, whether states will reject this federal money to expand their Medicaid program. Why not take it? it it's, the federal government's paying for it. You get more people right. with benefits. I want to talk a little bit about politics. So already we heard the, um, the House leader, majority leader, say we're going to hold a vote July 11th to repeal this law. I want to say we had Congressman Brian Bilbray on the show yesterday, Republican congressman running for re-election. First question I asked, are you going to vote to repeal this law. He sidestepped the question and did say, and we know this, that he introduced legislation a couple months ago. It's, it's, it's legislation that would require funds to go into melanoma research. We know his daughter is, has been public about her struggle with melanoma. The funds come from a tanning bed fee imposed by the Affordable Care Act. So he's in a tough spot, right? If he repeals the act, that means his legislation, something that's very important to him, personal well, he's, to he's him. He's going to get hammered by his opponent, uh, Scott Peters, who is forthrightly in favor of the act. So if, uh, if Brian Bilbray comes out against it, even this symbolic doesn't really mean much vote that they're going to hold, uh, he's going to get hammered. Now, if he plays it down the middle and, and refuses to take a position, he's going to look Weasley. 
So <laughs> this is what's called politics. Sometimes it's real tough on very difficult, devi divisive issues, and he's got one. He's got a different district than he's had before, uh, more leaning towards the Democrats. He's in a tough campaign. It's funny, it, after the interview, I did the interview, and then I watched the tape, and I walked away thinking, okay, he said no, he's not going to vote to repeal this act. In, in fact, my follow-up was, oh, you're not going to vote to repeal this act. <laughs> I'm hearing, we're hearing rumblings now that no, we want, you know, that's not the case. So right now, Brian Bilbray, if you're watching, we want to know what are you going to do <laughs> July 11th. I'm going to leave that there and move on to another Supreme Court decision or lack of decision. Now, Tony, this is the Mount Soledad Cross. Tw is it a 20-year court battle? Can you sum it up for us in about 30 seconds? Two decades. Uh, we've been fighting about whether that cross should stay on public land or is it a uh, endorsement of a, a particular brand of religion and therefore unconstitutional. The Supreme Court uh, punted and said, you deal with it. Come back later when you've got a final decision. Back it goes to federal court here in San Diego, a federal court that in 2008 said, cross is good. It can stay. Overturned by the appellate court up in San Francisco. That's how it got to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court looked at it and said, no, I don't think we'll deal with this today, thank you. Go on back and make a final decision, then bring it back to us. So we've had two decades. We're going to have, you pick it, 12, 24 more months of litigating. Kenny, you've been covering, um, you've been a reporter in San Diego for a long time. People feel strongly about this, don't they? They certainly do, uh, and it doesn't seem to be diminishing over time, this furor over it on either side. So, yeah, uh, your guess is as good as mine at what's going to happen next. I mean, here we go again with this whole court battle. When you think about the money that's tied up in all of these cases? Well, the city of San Diego was uh, in the case for a long, long time, and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and got exhausted uh, by it and finally the federal government stepped in. Yeah, people feel very strongly on both sides, good folks on both sides, people who feel that is a military memorial in a military town. Other people say that it's a holdover from the days when we could sort of push one religion in people's faces uh, regardless of the idea that we're a more diverse society. They've clashed for two decades. They're going to clash at least a little bit longer. The appellate court and the Supreme Court suggested maybe there's a compromise out there. I can't quite figure what it is. That, that cross sticks 43 <laughs> feet up in the air. It's visible from Interstate 5. It's been there since 1954. A group of people think it's outrageous that it is there, that it violates their rights. And other people think we'd be breaking faith uh, with people who didn't break faith with us, military folks. Back to the courts we go. Third decision. Okay, still with the military. Now, the high court ruled on whether it's legal to lie about being awarded the Medal of Honor and other military honors. So, Tony, what did the court say? The court said six to three. The First Amendment uh, guards uh, contemptible speech, lying speech, uh, even as it guards uh, motherhood and apple pie. And that this man out of the water district in Southern California uh, he didn't try to get some money from this by claiming he was a Medal of Honor recipient, didn't try to get some, uh, some benefit that only Medal of Honor uh, recipients can receive. He was just bo shooting his mouth off. And shooting your mouth off alone is not uh, a violation of the law and should not be, and so they struck it down. Now, the, the court also implied that if the legislature uh, wants to go back, the Congress wants to go back and... and and dev, uh, devise a stricter law that says if you use one of these medals or the boasting about a letter, uh, medal to get something, fraud, defraud people, that's a whole other thing. But just to shoot your mouth off and impress the guy at the end of the bar or a girl you're going out with, <laughs> contemptible behavior, the court said, not illegal. But if, if, if I want to walk down the street in a, in a uh, Navy officer's uniform and have people salute me, is that legal? Very difficult question. The question is, are you impersonating someone or are you just wearing a costume? Same is true of being a police officer. You walk down the street and say, hey, I, I'm a detective for the San Diego Police Department. Uh, I'm a great guy. Are you impersonating a cop? I don't know. Uh, it's, that's why they have lawyers and, and judges. But <laughs> impersonating is one thing. Just shooting your mouth off like the fellow did uh, up in, up in um, eastern uh, Los Angeles County. Different thing. So if, a, if I don't wear the uniform and I say I'm an admiral, <laughs> that's okay. Again. You, uh, you tried this weekend, Kenny, yeah, and you okay, tell okay, us what I'll happened. We'll talk about that. We'll do an interview from jail for you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We're out of time. I want to thank you both for being here and send our viewers over to kpbs.org. I know there's a much longer conversation with you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure.